Yes, thank you. Um, welcome to my talk, and uh, let's dive in directly. I um, guess this isn't working, so we'll do it like this. Okay, um, the talk on one slide. The problem we are considering is uh, that we're giving uh, POMDP, and we want to find a small policy uh, as a case state, finite state machine, which uh, solves the problem uh, such that eventually, under this policy, something good happens with probability larger than t. And whenever we have a problem where we don't directly know how to solve it, we reduce it to another problem. And in this instance, we reduced it to the question whether there's a simple parametric Markov chain uh, uh, such that there are parameter valuations uh, that achieve the same goal. And now, while you might not be familiar with the problem on the right, it's actually well studied in the research, uh, in the verification community. So uh, we hope to use results from that. Now, the um, interesting thing is also that this reduction goes into two directions, so actually the problems turn out to be equivalent, and that's very helpful. And then we can profit from all the uh, things such as uh, the fact that the complexity is, um, complexity results carry over and that uh, we can use this tool support for finding small strategies uh, by using the tool support for a parameter synthesis. Now, I do have some more time, so the rest of the talk will be outlined as follows. I'll first go into the problem statement a little bit further. I will show uh, how this reduction works, which will also uh, yield an introduction to the parameter synthesis problem. I will quickly cover how these two problems are equivalent, and I will showcase some of the uh, results that carry over. So first question you might have is eventually something good happens with probability larger t. What does that mean? Well, that's a natural language equivalent of a temporal logic specification. But as we are in a, in a talk uh, in the reinforcement learning session, I'm going to introduce it to you slightly different. Uh, it's actually the same as a generalized stochastic shortest path uh, MDP, where we have a set of states, actions, and transitions as you're used to. We have a subset of the states uh, labeled as goal states. And then the Bellman equation uh, looks like this. The value of a state is the probability to actually reach a goal state. And the probability is 1 if we are already in a goal state. The probability is 0 if there is no path to ever reach the goal state. And in all remaining cases, it's like you would expect the standard Bellman backup. And now the statement, eventually something good happens with probability larger than t, means that for a dedicated initial state, the value of this initial state is larger than t. Now the second part is why do we want to get a k-state policy? Well, uh, here in the, this case, we had the advantage that maximizing taking a maximizing action in every state yields a policy which already fulfills this, but we are looking at POMDPs, and in POMDPs we cannot observe the state. So uh, GSSP POMDP could look like something where you have the typical MDP, uh, and additionally a set of observations, and then deterministic observation mapping where each state is labeled with an observation. And now the problem is that an optimal policy is no longer of the form mapping states to actions, but rather mapping observations together with some information about the history to a distribution of actions. And um, now the general case or the typical case is to construct a belief MDP in which we would uh, consider all of history and store this in the, in the belief, but this is uh, sometimes uh, not so beneficial due to memory restrictions. And what we actually try to do here is we're going to use lock of k bits uh, memory. And the benefits are then that the policy is better, uh, probably better to explain and also potentially quick to compute. Now, this work obviously doesn't stand on its own. There are others who have also in this community who have worked on this. Generalized stochastic shortest paths have been considered in a line of work by Kolobov and others, uh, also in UAI. 
Uh, the observation that policies are often complicated was shared by Yadin Shades in AAAI 2016. Uh, searching among small finite state controllers for POMDPs is a very old idea and has been pioneered in 1999 and further considered, for example, in 2006. Uh, but recently, there's been a, quite some work on finding these simple finite state controllers for the special case where the um, value of the sta initial state is actually one, so where it's possible to almost surely reach the goal state. So recapping, what we are trying to do is we are trying to search among finite state controllers, uh, evaluate those finite state controllers uh, with respect to this indefinite horizon property or the GSSP. And the idea that we are pursuing is to reduce this to a well-known, well-supported problem. Now, reductions typically benefit from formulations as decision problems. So that's why we came up with this formulation as a decision problem Given any POMDP, is there a policy uh, represented by a K-state final state uh, controller, and so forth? And the simplest variant of this decision procedure or decision problem is actually the situation where K is one or where we have a memoryless policy. So let's look a little bit into memoryless policies. Uh, so a memoryless policy maps observations to distributions over actions. And to phrase that differently, it maps observation action pairs to probabilities. So I have here a small toy POMDP. And a policy would then, for instance, take a red observation and action A2 in that red observation with probability Q and action A1 with the probability 1 minus Q. And in a state with a blue observation, it would take action A1 with probability P1 Etc. And now the interesting thing is that every possible policy of this form is uniquely described by these three values P1, P2, and Q. So really what we have to do is just take those probabilities and look what happens if we attach them uh, and, and, or apply them to this POMDP. So let's do that. And what we get is uh, what's often referred to as the induced Markov chain or the policy evaluation problem. And what we did is, for instance, if we look at state S3, remember that action A2 was used with probability Q. So from state S3 in the right-hand side in the result, we'll get with a self-loop to state S3 with probability Q. And we will go to state S2 with the remaining probability 1 minus Q. And likewise, we can look at state S1 on the top. And there we go with action A2 down and then to state S0 with probability a half. So we take action A2 with Q, uh, probability Q and that results in a transition from state S1 to state S0 with probability a half times Q. Now let's look at this object because this is really ev uh, storing everything that we need. And this object is, called, uh, is actually a Markov chain where the, instead of having fixed probabilities on the edges, we have polynomials over a set of variables far, and this is what typically is called a parametric Markov chain. A Markov chain, by the way, is just an MDP with a single action. So a bit more formally, a probabilist or a parametric Markov chain is a set of states, a set of variables, and then uh, the transitions omit this, uh, you can omit the actions there because there's just one, so it's a uh, typical uh, mapping from state pairs to uh, polynomials in this case. And then we again require a set of goal states. And the uh, accompanying decision procedure that we really need to solve on a PMC is are there values for these parameters P1, P2, and Q, such that eventually something good happens with probability larger than T. So what we just did is illustrate how the reduction from a uh, from an arbitrary POMDP and a pom memoryless policy to a parametric Markov chain might look like. And this idea that I illustrated is actually also the construction that we use. And now, of course, you can argue that we are not just interested in a yes-no answer, but in particular, if the answer is yes, we would like to get the policy. Now, the good thing is that, of course, people in paramet parameter synthesis if the answer is yes to the question on the right-hand side, they also would like the valuation of the parameters. 
and as the valuation of the parameters uniquely describes the policy, this reduction also allows us to construct the policy. Now, I already spoiled you and said that those two problems should be equivalent. However, there is a slight difference in the formulation I used here uh, compared to the formulation I used on the first slide, and that's that the parametric, uh, parametric Markov chain here is not necessarily simple. A simple parametric Markov chain is a large class of Markov chains, which is um, a, a slightly less general, but still uh, equally hard in many uh, situations. And the idea is that per, uh, transitions always occur in pairs, where one uh, probability uh, is p, then the other uh, transition will have probability 1 minus p. And under this uh, slight restriction, um, it actually turns out that the inverse of the construction I showed you will yield a POM dp again. However, now I restricted the right-hand side, so you might argue that the, left, the um, reduction from left to right no longer holds. And that's true. However, there's a simple reduction, a graph transformation of a POM dp, which makes sure that we get a POM dp with a specific structure, which we call simple POM dp here. And the nice thing about simple POM dps is that the transition I, or the reduction I showed you before will yield a simple PMC. So really, uh, by a two-step approach, we can reduce any POMDP under a memoryless policy to uh, a parametric Markov chain. And then um, a similar uh, yet other graph transformation allows us to reduce K-state policies to memoryless policies by just blowing up the POMDP uh, a bit and then um, what we can do is reach the point where, given any POMDP, the question whether there is a K-state policy uh, such that eventually something good happens under this policy with probability larger than T is just the same as the parameter synthesis problem for PMCs. Now, um, I promised you I would go a little bit into the uh, advantages of this reduction and uh, what I first want to stress is that we also support other objectives in particular this generalized stochastic shortest path problem generalizes the normal stochastic uh, uh, shortest path problem of are the expected costs on, uh, to reach some goal uh, smaller than t and that is in a uh, case uh, a more general case of the I would say standard POMDP question of is the infinite horizon expected discounted reward smaller than T? So all the, uh, this reduction also works for the, this more standard POMDP question. And then uh, what this additionally brings us is that we get complexity results for POMDPs in a, under a temporal logic. So uh, this is well explored in the verification community for PMCs. So we can just use those results for POMDPs. And in the paper, we ask some more questions. For instance, what happens if the randomization is limited and we don't allow uh, arbitrary values for the randomization? Or what happens if we look at different types of finite state controllers because there's no really unique definition of those in the literature? And it actually depends a little bit, the results depend a little bit on the assumptions that we make there. So there's also an empirical part of this evaluation. Uh, and the first thing I'm showing you is admittedly a, a, a toy example. Yet for POMDPs, you always should be aware that problems with only a little uh, tiny number of states can already uh, induce a very difficult problem. So this is a simple grid. And the question is to arrive at the destination within t steps. And the, or the expected number of uh, steps the actual optimum is 4.13. And what we did here is we looked for a memoryless policy and for a policy with uh, uh, two states, whether this was possible. I uh, list the number of states and parameters in the parametric Markov chain. And the first thing we see that a nearly optimal policy is not possible for uh, to be represented by a memoryless policy. However, with just a little bit of memory, we can already get a very good policy in, in a very reasonable time. 
And uh, when I say that this is not possible, then the nice thing is that there are also papers and uh, automatic tool support, which automatically proves that this is not possible. And we could actually automatically prove that it's not possible to find a memoryless policy, which uh, is better than uh, an expected number of five steps. And maybe uh, a bit more uh, esoteric is that we can compute an analytical solution in 155 seconds, which describes the influence of the randomization. Um, the, a more interesting example probably is uh, this network protocol where we want to optimally assign packets to slots. The POMDP is significantly larger and especially also the number of observations is uh, significantly larger. And the question is to find a strategy such that the expected packet loss is under T packets. The actual optimum is somewhere around nine. We don't really know where it is because it's a rather hard problem. And we looked for small strategies which uh, realized this and already with uh, a memoryless uh, policy, we can obtain something which is off less than 10% in a very reasonable time. And notice that we tried two other state-of-the-art solvers and both of them had to time out on this problem. Now, I know that POMDP problems have a wide variety and that there's probably uh, some solver out there which can do this, but we, we had to make some choices here. And what is also interesting here is that you can see how the, of course, the, no, the, the memories uh, that we have explodes the number of parameters, but still for the k equals two case, we are solving a parametric Markov chain where we have 1,783 unknown parameters, which are all real valued. And still we can uh, solve this problem within 880 seconds. <coughs> and of course, uh, these methods, they work uh, better the farther away from the optimum you are. So that's why for t equals 15, we are very fast. Uh, still, we can automatically prove that for k equals 4, so that's uh, more than 4,000 parameters, then uh, 5 is a lower bound. That's uh, quite a, uh, some way or, uh, from the, the actual optimum, but it shows that we can do this also for larger k's. And uh, for k equals one, we can still find an analytical solution, which is then a polynomial or actually a rational function, so a fraction of two polynomials um, in 400 seconds. So in the end, what we did is we reduced the problem of finding small strategies in POMDPs, which has previously been explored by others, uh, to a problem which has previously been explored by others in another community. And we could show that there is, uh, in, in both ways, there's actually something to gain from this reduction and that uh, some of the questions and some of the results are actually interesting for both communities. And that's uh, the conclusion of my talk. <laughs>